I know that saving money is really tough in Singapore because we have a lot of inflation, things are really expensive and cost of living is really soaring through the roof. So in today's video, let's talk about 5 things that you can save money in Singapore. And the things that I talk about are really applicable to my own life because I've been optimizing my expenses. Let's start with the first one, which is your mobile plan, especially your mobile SIM only plan. If you are still using those 24 months plan, I think it's really time for you to change because we don't need these plans anymore. In fact, if you look at my SIM only plan, which is Zim SIM only for $10.10 a month, you get 4G data, 100 gigabytes every month, and you can even get free roaming data at 2 gigabytes Malaysia data plus 1 gigabytes Indonesia and Thailand data. So you see, I not only just pay $10, I can also get free roaming data, which also means I don't have to buy any kind of prepaid tourist sim when I travel to these countries. $10, 10 cent eh. nowadays. I think you buy two cups of bubble tea also more than $10, 10 cent, right? So yeah, lah. I'm also using the Zim SIM only card where I still get 5G data on their partner Maxis. And then in Thailand, I get like AIS 5G data for free. Eh. So yes, that's my first saving money tactic, which is use a mobile SIM only plan like Zim. I can use my promo code HONEY to get some additional rewards as well. The number two thing that you can save money on is your broadband plan. And specifically, it's your fiber broadband plan. Because how many of you are lured in by sales agent telling you you need like 1 Gbps of data? Because the fact is, you don't. In fact, for myself, I'm using the M1 500 Mbps data at $30 per month. And that's not the cheapest plan, you know. Because recently, I heard that competitors like Simba is offering 2.5 Gbps of data for just 20 Singapore dollars per month. And then there's another one, Wiscom's offering $21.80. All these are much cheaper than M1 Fiber Broadband. So I may want to take a second look and see when my contract is up, I may want to switch over to a new provider. To me, internet broadband has no differentiation. Whichever is the cheapest, I'll go with it. As long as the connectivity is good, can really. The speed doesn't really matter much above a certain threshold, which is like 100 Mbps. Because even in Malaysia, I'm using a 100 Mbps fiber broadband plan. And you see, I'm still doing okay with my YouTube stuff. So really, you do not need all the bells and whistles of whatever 1000 Gbps fiber broadband plan. No need. And if you got even better money saving tips, then come and join us at over 15,000 members at the Honey Money SG Telegram group to share your saving money strategies there. The third thing that you can save money on is expensive brokerages because how many of you are still paying above $25 to pay for your Singapore CDP exchange trading order? Now, if you are someone who prefer to buy and sell through CDP, I think you can go through DBS speakers to do a cash upfront trade and it's much cheaper than $25 and it's through CDP. I think the minimum is like $10 and above. Then if you want to sell through CDP, you can use FSM1, which is much cheaper than $25 for sure. Then if we are talking about non-CDP, actually there are a lot of brokerages offering much lesser than $25. In fact, we are talking about $1, $2, per trade. If you are buying US stocks and ETFs, even better. Don't even need so much money. There are so many custodian discount brokerages and one of them is my sponsor of today. Some of you want to invest in the US market, but you are unsure how to start. So here is a quick guide on how to use Weibo to start investing in US equities. Weibo offers one of the most competitive pricings with low commission. Where the commission is 50 US cents per order minimally with zero platform fee during the regular and extended hours. To start investing, you can start by funding the account, go to home, then transfers, then deposit via EDDA, fast or telegraphic transfer. EDDA is preferred so link your internet banking account for direct debit. Next, go to transfers, then currency exchange and convert to your selected currency example Singapore dollars to US dollars with no currency exchange or conversion fees finally select your favorite stock or ETF for limit orders put in your limit price and quality then click on buy and confirm wait for the order to review and here are the rewards when you sign up for a Weibo account with my exclusive link for the welcome promo for new customers only deposit 2000 US dollars and above and fulfill the requirements to get up to 1050 US dollars of cash vouchers plus an exclusive money bull interest booster of 180 days, which could elevate your USD money bull subscription return to up to 8.4% per annum return. There is also a transfer in due for both new and existing customers who have not done any shares transfer to Weibo. Transfer in 10,000 US dollars and above worth of US listed shares and maintain for 90 days to get up to 2,000 US dollars of cash vouchers plus a bonus of 500 US dollars trading vouchers 
plus a transfer out fee subsidy of up to 150 US dollars with my exclusive link. Terms and conditions apply. So don't miss this offers. Use my exclusive link or scan the QR code right here to get your Weibo account today. So most importantly for brokerages, as long as they are regulated by MAS, I think they are good enough. There's no need for you to stay loyal to a particular broker. Number four saving money tip will be credit card annual fees because how many of you think that in order to get a credit card and hold on to it, you need to pay annual fee. That's why you don't think of applying. Now, the thing is, you should never pay for credit card annual fees unless there are certain promotions that come along with it with very good rewards. Like they give you additional miles, additional cashback and stuff. For example, I paid annual fee for my DBS Vantage credit card because it gives me 10 complimentary priority pass visits plus a call plus membership. So I think that is worth $600 and the fee is waivable from the second year onwards if you hit the spend requirements. I also paid annual fees for another credit card which is Amex High Flyer card because they offer two free priority pass visits plus the Accor Plus membership as well. So that was around $300 per year. Then the other credit card that I paid annual fee is the HSBC Travel One because if you pay like $200 you get like 20,000 miles and 4 Dragon Pass visits which I think is quite worth the money. Furthermore, HSBC is now running a lightning deal where you can get very attractive gifts like the Sony PS5, $500 e-capital voucher or even Dyson Airwrap and you just have to be the first 500 applicants for a HSBC credit card from this date stated and the requirements are to provide marketing consent plus spend a minimum of $500 by the end of the following calendar month. And also with the current Team Air Miles versus Team Cashback campaign, if you apply for HSBC Travel One or Revolution, you get additional max miles. Even for existing customers, you will also get a $50 cashback if you hit the minimum spend of $500. So that's a gift for everyone, sign up with my links. So yes, some credit cards are worth the fees, but not all credit cards are worth the fees. So depending on the benefits, if they do benefit you, then it may be worth it to pay the fee. But otherwise, please do not pay any credit card fees. Last one, I want to talk about car ownership, whether you can save money on this. Now, I totally get the idea of car ownership, especially if you are in the sales job or if you have family members to ferry around, you need to go like multiple places, which makes financial sense to get a car. Otherwise, Grab or taxi is too expensive, plus inconvenient. So if you can't afford a car, great, but please don't overstretch your finances just to get a car or worse, to impress others that you don't even like. The Singapore public transport infrastructure is also really great so I really don't see any need to own a car unless you are in a sales role or you have family members or it really enhances your life because if you look at other cities where cars are really cheap it may become like Bangkok you know cars are really cheap but you know the roads are really crowded like you call a grab it takes like 20 to 30 minutes to get to your pickup area so it's very sad. So yes, here are my 5 money saving tips in Singapore if you really want to save money and optimize your expenses. And if you're wondering where I am now, I'm actually in China Suzhou, one of the national parks. So if you're wondering why the scenery is so nice because you need to pay a ticket to enter the park. But okay lah, the park is very nice, very scenic right? You see the water, you see all these very nice ancient looking houses. You even see a white cat like this. See this white cat? Looks so rich right? But one more thing, if you really want to own a car but you don't know how much you can afford, then I'll go through with you some thought that I shared about car ownership on how much salary you need to earn to own a car in Singapore.